N'Golo Kante faints in training ahead of the Manchester City game. Marcus Alonso and Eden Hazard speak after that very game about the tactics. And the main question, Conte in or Conte out? Watch the whole video to find out. Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for Chelsea Weekly. And if you've been watching and following our channel for a while, you'd know this segment. But basically this video is just informing you about everything surrounding Chelsea that happened over the past week really. I mean in theory we would obviously like to do this weekly because it's called Chelsea Weekly. But when we have midweek games like next week when we're basically all going to be Barcelona, we're probably going to struggle to get that one out. But this week there is Chelsea Weekly so um, let's go with it. So everything I'm going to speak about today stands in some sort of connection to the game against Manchester City on the weekend, which we obviously lost 1-0 and really didn't play well in at all. And to start things off with, and to start in chronological order as well, let's start with N'Golo Kante. A lot of us were very surprised when we saw that N'Golo Kante didn't even make the squad on Sunday. And then we heard that he was out because of illness really, but obviously a few days later, I think on Monday it was, we learned more about that situation. And the fact is that N'Golo Kante fainted at Cobham after training on Friday, giving his teammates a real scare is what was being reported anyway. Kante was then sent to see a specialist um, who did check him out very thoroughly and thankfully the tests came all back clear and um, he was actually declared fit to play against Manchester City on Sunday. On Sunday morning though, the French midfielder felt unwell and was therefore then left out of the squad completely. More of a precautionary action, because on Monday he was completely fine again and completed the whole training session with the rest of the team, so he seems to be just fine. But still, it is it is a bit worrying, especially after what happened to the Fiorentina captain Davide Astori, um, who did pass away in his sleep, reportedly from a heart attack. So hopefully Kante is completely fine and has no further issues with that at all. But now going on to the next stories, and they are about players saying certain things after the game. Both Marcus Alonso and Eden Hazard had a few things to say. And starting it off with the Spanish wingback, he said, and I quote, The team had the conditions and quality to play much better, and I don't think we were at our best. I think it's an attitude problem and we have to make things clearer and improve quickly. We have nine matches left and we want to be in the top four. I think that is difficult, but we have to change the attitude. Now for him to speak about the attitude, I found to be very interesting. And he sounds like he's putting most of the performance, of the poor performance on the players, which I found interesting. Some people have said, well, obviously he has done that. Because he wouldn't play under any other manager, which, to be honest, might be true. But yeah, no, it is interesting to hear what he had to say compared to what Eden Hazard had to say. And again, I'm going to quote. When you leave the pitch and you have the impression that you've ran, but that you haven't played a game of football, that's a pity. We could have played on for three hours and I wouldn't touch a ball. Only at the end it went better. In the last 10 to 15 minutes, we had more possession and we should have tried to do that all game. When asked whether he felt Conte would use him in that position as the false nine again, Hazard replied, I don't know. When the manager plays me up front, I try to give everything, but we haven't played a good game. And for me personally, it's difficult to play a good game when you only touch the ball three times. I think that when we had the ball, we should have done better. We made some bad decisions too. There weren't a lot of opportunities. We had a few situations where we could possibly create something, but we didn't. If we'd taken these opportunities, we could maybe have scored a goal, but we played against Man City. It's difficult. So the little Belgian, while also saying that the team didn't perform very well, clearly wasn't happy with the tactics of him as the false nine. And reports have since come out that Hazard is actually considering his future at Chelsea, growing increasingly frustrated with the manager's tactics. Apparently also some other players aren't and weren't too happy with Conte's approach and are fearing that Conte's issues with the board are actually jeopardising our season. And to be honest, you can understand that Hazard is an unbelievable footballer and he barely touched the ball. All he did was run about and chump for long balls that he was never going to get against Otamendi and Laporte. And like I said before, I think it's fine starting the lineup that we did start with. I think that's okay against Manchester City at the Etihad. But when you go 1-0 down with basically the full second half to go, you can't just leave it at the same thing. Like, you have to change something. Bring on a striker, get Hazard into the game because he just wasn't involved at all. Like, whenever he did get the ball, someone was kicking him in the back of the leg or somehow reaching the ball or, you know, ref just didn't give a foul. But he just wasn't... In, involved in the play well we didn't really we we as a team weren't involved in the game really if we're being completely honest but it's very understandable why it is frustrating and exactly that is what we're all frustrated about seeing Hazard there trying to jump for long balls which is never going to work and obviously when you don't change anything as the manager fans are going to you know be frustrated with that Olivier Giroud actually also spoke to the media after the game and I'm just going to sum that one up basically he said that everyone is together and behind the manager when he was asked whether he was frustrated to see Hazard start as the striker, he denied that, but said the coach made the tactics and we tried to respect it. 
Now the emphasis here lies on the word tried. A strange word to use in this scenario if you are fully behind the manager in my opinion. So let's speak about the elephant in the room. Should Conte stay or should he go? And when should he go if he should go? After the game on Sunday, a lot of people that were Conte in and I'm kind of on the fence about all of this now. Both Louis and Lewis said basically that they are on the fence now in their fan cams after. If that, you know, has changed now, I'm sorry, but that's what I had them say basically. I know Eunice has also changed his opinion and I'm kind of similar. Because it does seem like Conte is starting to or has already lost the dressing room. And once that has happened or once that is happening, there is almost no going back. There is no one's... There is almost no saving the situation. And I think most of us fans want stability at our club. And to have the same manager for more than two seasons for once. Since basically Mourinho's first, you know, spell at Chelsea. I mean, whether you want that with Conte or a different manager doesn't really matter. The main thing is that we want stability. To me though, it does seem like Conte doesn't want to be here anymore. It has felt like that for a while. There has been a period in the summer as well when it's felt like that already. And Conte feels like he hasn't been backed by the board. Whether you agree with that or not doesn't really matter because Conte certainly does feel like that. And he is very obviously growing more and more frustrated with the board. And that naturally rubs off on players and everybody around the club. Almost everyone has been quite certain that Conte will basically be gone by next season. Like I said in my review on Sunday, and if you haven't seen that, click the card up there to check it out. If that is the case that he doesn't want to be here anyway, and if the, you know, or the club just want to get rid of him in the summer anyway, I almost don't really see the point in keeping him until the end of the season in the first place. But see, I don't just want Conte gone because of his tactics and all that. While I definitely wasn't happy with what we did against Man City and, you know, in other games as well, mainly if the manager doesn't want to be here, if the players are growing frustrated with the manager and he's losing the dressing room, there's almost no other choice than parting ways really and for the better of the club that is so so like I said while I'm not happy with the tactics in some games it's not just about that but mainly it's just for the better of the club because there's no point having a manager that doesn't want to be here and that the players don't want to don't want to have here so that's why I'm starting to feel like Conte has to go but like I said what's the point in keeping him until the end of the season if we're going to part ways in the summer anyway on the other hand of that argument though it's too close to the Barcelona game to appoint someone else so we can't and won't do anything before that and if we go through a lot of people probably including me will want Conte to stay until the end of the season at least and if we don't go through against Barcelona but we'll be fighting a very tough fight for top four and for the FA Cup but even if we were to part ways with Conte especially now who can we even bring in? Of course, there are a few good managers out there that are out of work at the moment. Thomas Tuchel, Carlo Ancelotti, Luis Enrique. You know, some people are speaking about Frank Lampard, who I think now or at the end of March is allowed to, you know, coach teams within England as long as they're not in Europe, I think. So, you know, m maybe that would work if we lose against Barcelona. But, you know, I'm not sure that's the best idea. Someone that hasn't managed anything before <laughs> to appoint him. Not a good idea, in my opinion. Thomas Tuchel looks like he'll become the Bayern manager next season. Luis Enrique, while winning everything with Barcelona, hasn't done very well in his other managerial jobs. And Carlo Ancelotti, well, we all love Carlo, don't we? But do we want another legend of a manager at Chelsea to kind of destroy his legacy at the club? by coming back like Mourinho kind of did. And also, and I heard Nini make this point, if you look at our recent transfer business, not buying big and expensive players, except Morata, fair enough, are we really gonna sack Conte when we have to give him a massive payout? Saving millions in signing Emerson Palmieri, for example, instead of Alexandro, and then spend millions on getting rid of a manager? Business-wise, that doesn't sound very logical at all. So if Conte doesn't walk himself, are we even gonna sack him in the summer? I don't know. And to be honest, it's all over the place at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me if the board don't really know what to do at the moment either. They're probably not sure that we want Conte gone, but that's going to cost us a lot of money. Do we keep him? But if we want to keep him, we have to properly back him and try our very hardest to get his first choice targets. But the board, in my opinion, need to figure out if they want to keep Conte. They need to speak with him if there's a chance of him quitting in the summer by himself. And depending on those things, make a decision on which manager we do want to get in if we were to part ways with Antonio Conte. Like I said, it's all over the place. I don't really know. Like I said, I'm not sure what's the point in keeping Conte if we go out against Barcelona. What about the summer? I would say you've got to change something, especially with what's going on with Hazard. Obviously, it could just be the media riling stuff up and it, he couldn't even be considering his future Chelsea. But if he is... We can't risk losing Hazard before Conte, who doesn't seem like he properly wants to be here anyway, and is the latest, in my opinion, going to leave when his contract runs out. So, you know, is that smart to risk losing Hazard just to have Conte for one more year? I'm not sure. So that's really it for me. Leave me your thoughts on Conte fainting in training, on what Alonso and Hazard had to say, and whether you want Conte to stay full stop, 
or you want him gone in the summer, or even want him gone ASAP. And if you do want him gone, who would you bring in to replace him? But remember, not every manager, especially managers that are in a job currently, will join Chelsea with the way things usually turn out for managers to Chelsea. But yeah, that's it from me. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video. Don't forget to check out my social media with this last 15 or 7 on both Instagram and Twitter. As you can see over here, it'd be absolute class if you could follow me over there. And also, of course, don't forget to subscribe to 100% Chelsea. We would massively appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching. Up the chills, and I'll see you next time.